I want to talk about poetry. You chose to be a poet. Why poet? Small groups of words accumulated, printed usually, not spoken. Do you prefer spoken poetry or printed poetry? That's a great question, and, and I'm going to come at it uh, circuitously uh, in this way. Um, uh, coming from a, a working class household, my father was an autodidact intellectual, very, very, very uh, learned. Uh, he had wanted to be an artist at one point. Uh, and and uh, and did take an art course, but he was essentially naive what as an artist. What did your dad do? Uh, he was a, apprentice as a sign painter when he was a teen, and he went from painting signs. This is the, in the days before neon and fluorescent lights. Uh, people actually still had sign, hand painted signs, and so that's what he was. That's what he was doing as a teenager, and then he he took one year of high school just to go to art class, so that he could move from lecturing to actually faces and scenes and landscapes and and, and so on and and um, uh, but he was a very uh, uh, learned person very brainy person uh, he uh, uh, at one point sold the Encyclopedia Britannica and he was a very good encyclopedia salesman because he knew it inside out and and uh, in terms of his speech and his diction um, he was hardcore uh, grammarian uh, and and none of that gutter talk none of that black English none of that uh, street speech or slang was he permitted because he wanted to fit in to the dominant culture did he want to sound educated did he want why oh all of the above he wanted he wanted to sound educated he wanted to be understood as 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 being learned he wanted to be appreciated as as someone who had a total command of the language, and and uh, and to comport himself in that way, and to present himself in that way. And this was partly a defense mechanism against stereotypes, and the stereotyping racism that would have classed him as a black man as being illiterate or unlettered or unable to wield the language uh, in every way that he might desire to, um, and and to not be very knowledgeable about the larger world and so on. And, and he totally defied those stereotypes, utterly defied them. Uh, but the price of that... you were in Halifax or you were born in Three Mile Plain or something? Right? Yeah, but I grew up in Halifax. You grew up in Halifax. Yeah, okay. that's where we lived. And, and uh, so uh, in our household, it was very strict, rigid uh, uh, usage of, of English only in, the, in, our, house, in our household. And Close to what? What other language? Well, being more relaxed, being more hip and Slang, slangy, casual. and right. okay. all the rest of it. No, we had to enunciate. We had to we had to speak the language correctly uh, all the time. Now, as an adult, as a child, I found it a bit of a burden because no matter what the rules were in our household on the street, there was all kinds of gutter talk, street talk, slang. And people just hanging out, being casual, and all the rest of it. And I could not go around speaking uh, proper English uh, in a in a working class, militaristic. Uh, in in terms of many of uh, many of my school chums were the, the sons and, and daughters of military guys, navy guys, sailors who do nothing but cuss, who do who do nothing but curse. That's all they know. That's their only language. You're crying out loud. Cuss did this dad, and cuss that. Did your dad and it's work? also sometimes polysyllabic. They use the mother effer every now and then, right? But mainly monosyllable. But they get some polysyllables going on there every now and then too. Um, and and uh, uh, so so I had that milieu. That's where I went. To, I went to school and I was playing on the school grounds, or in the, or in the playgrounds. And that's the stuff I was hearing. You do you do some street hockey. This is how the guys are talking. So, so uh, I had that influence all around me too. Well, I had in the household a very strict uh, approach to English, and of course in school a fairly strict approach to English as, as well. But nevertheless, I'm really so happy that I also had the, that street side and 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 the black uh, uh, side of things uh, coming in uh, into my language into my consciousness at the at the time. And the other thing about all this, and to and just to defend my father's reasoning. Uh, for one moment, and I didn't really appreciate this until I was older. What he also understood is that 
even though things were getting better, it's the 1960s, things are getting better, there's forward movement, but he still knew that his sons were going to experience racism as young black men. He knew that. And so he wanted us to be able to make that phone call, to be able to apply for that job, and to have a chance to get in the door, and not be told as someone white on the other end of the phone would hear our black accent or hear our slang and understand that we are black and so therefore are not going to be offered the possibility of that job. He wanted us to have a chance to show up to get the interview. And that's why he was so insistent that we master the language.